Another week's end in what they call Free Libya. Another expression, routine now, of defiance against Gaddafi in Benghazi. But it's been a poor week for the opposition forces, even backed as they are by foreign warplanes. Their retreat and inability to stand up to Gaddafi's army has led to apparently anguished discussions at the transitional government here about their military structure at the front line. We'll take some measures and it could include some changes. Should we expect a change in military leadership? Maybe. If it was the death of fear that led to the uprising, it's the fear of death that keeps pushing the rebels back. Something's got to change. The latest intelligence from the American military establishment suggests that Gaddafi's ground forces outnumber the rebels by 10 to 1, and that's discounting their obvious military superiority. Hardly surprising then that the people here keep calling for more help from the outside world. Which makes it even more disconcerting for the opposition that there are such mixed messages from the coalition as to whether or not they want to arm the rebels. While some have said the United Nations resolution does allow for it, others on either practical or more philosophical grounds are saying it shouldn't happen. In terms of uh, providing assistance to them, frankly there are many countries that can do that. That's not a unique uh, capability for the United States and as far as I'm concerned uh, somebody else should do that. With regard to arming the rebels, our view at the moment is negative. In other words, we don't view such a decision. In our view, this could also create an environment which would be conducive to terrorism, and that would in itself be dangerous. None of it's to say that the rebels are necessarily losing, just that neither side is muscular enough to win outright. Rebels demand strong advice from the outside world if they're to do something decisive. It's not happening at the moment.